Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk about controlling the mouse cursor. Um, how can we change the cursor that's displayed to the user uh, for various visual reasons um, to provide better feedback to the user, uh, display the fact that a process is ongoing, so basically tell them to be patient and wait a minute while access processes whatever it is you're doing in the background. Um, so let's take a look at a few of the options that are available to us. Now the first one, and I'm not going to be covering this today, um, it's a, an advanced approach, and I have a link here to an article that Mike Wolf did on the subject, and it's called Using APIs. And um, Mike's showing you here that you can switch and turn on the hand cursor. Um, this can be useful. And one thing to note here is he's using this guy here to display the hand, but be aware there are many other ones that you can employ. And you can even import your own cursor icon and use a custom icon if you wanted using this approach. Um, I'll probably do another article on this um, and probably video, video on this specifically, just because it's a little bit more involved and it would extend this video substantially to cover the subject properly. So, um, the link is here on my website for the basics if you want to look at Mike's article. Otherwise, perhaps at a later date, I'll cover it more in detail. But what I want to cover today are the things that are truly built into Access. Um, so there are three techniques. And the first one I'd like to talk about here is the screen mouse pointer. Well, let's take a look here. I have a demo database. Uh, the screen mouse pointer right here um, gives you access to basically five different cursors. So you have the standard, which is this guy here, what you're currently seeing, just the arrow. It's the standard cursor everyone knows. You have the eye beam, so it's more like when you're in text fields and things like that. The double arrow uh, vertically, up and down, and the double horizontally. Lastly, and this is the guy that you're going to use 99% of the time, it's the hourglass. That convey a message to the user, hey, there's a process ongoing, relax, wait a minute while it completes. Um, also note with the hourglass that its appearance has changed over the years. So depending on the OS, you're going to get different uh, hourglass visually. It used to literally be an hourglass. Now it's a spinning circle. And the last one is the default. Okay. And the default just basically returns the control back to access. And it will change the cursor based on the context, however it's been programmed internally. So it's important to always reset it back to default after you've finished doing whatever you want it to do explicitly via this property. How does it work? Very simple. Now I can take any of these just to get into the VBA. And you'll see it's always the same syntax. Screen, mouse pointer equals, and then some numeric value. Now the numeric value is what tells it which cursor to display. So zero is the default, and it says determined by Microsoft Access. So that's the one you always want to return it to that state. One is a standard cursor. Three is the eye beam. Seven is a double arrow vertically. Nine is a double arrow horizontally. And 11 is your hourglass. So just remember, it's fine to use these. As you can see, a single line, you're able to change it. Just always when you're done, whatever process you're doing, return it back to the screen mouse pointer zero, or your user may have some weird experiences visually. Okay. The second property is buttons have something called the cursor on hover property. And it is limited to buttons. I wished it extended beyond, but currently it does not. If it's this guy here, if we open it up, if you go over, it switches to a hand. Okay. And it's just another visual cue to help the user clearly understand that they are over the button that they can click. You'll notice, if we come back to the screen pointer for a second, that there is no hand option here. And that's why Mike, for instance, 
has that example with the API to show that you can extend beyond this. Um, so you could technically get the hand on other controls than just the button using his API approach. Um, let me just demonstrate what I was talking about before. Let's say we said we wanted a standard mouse pointer, okay? Now when I come here, I no longer get the hand. That's why it is critical to set it back to default, since that type of property works. Otherwise, this property will, will override anything else that's happening, because you've told it explicitly you want the standard mouse. You could do it with any of them. It doesn't make a difference, you see? So it's critical when you're done, whatever it was you were doing with this approach, that you reset it, so then other approaches continue to work properly. Um, so how does it work? Very easy. Let's go into design view. You come here, you go on the other tab for a button, you select the button, and you'll have a property here, cursor on hover, and you set it to hyperlink hand. Your other option is default. So let's set one to default, one is still to hand, just to show, oh, sorry, wrong one, just to show you. So standard would just be the standard one, and the hand is still there. So that's all it is. It's just a simple property on your controls uh, property sheet, right? So you come here, switch it back to hyperlink hand, and you're done. Lastly, and this is probably the one you're going to be using the most, is the do command hourglass. So let's take a look at it. As you can see here, I have two versions of it. It's the exact same thing. One uses VBA code and one uses macros. Let's just look at it in action for a second. So the way I have it set is it's going to automatically switch back after two seconds. So we click it, you get the hourglass, the spinny, and after two seconds it turns off. How does it work? Very simply, you select the control, go into your events for a click in my case, and you'll see here I'm using the display hourglass pointer action and I set it to yes. And if you wanted a second button to turn it off, you'd simply set it to no. My code, the way I made it automatically shut off, is I made a function that waits two seconds and then it shut it off automatically. If we were to do it using VBA, well, it's the exact same form you'll see except when I move over it, it goes to spinning, and when I move off of it, it turns off automatically. How did I achieve that? Well, it's a two-part process. On the button itself, I use the mouse move, and on the detail section, I use the mouse move. So I use the button's mouse move to trigger the uh, hourglass uh, to turn it on, and then I use the detail section mouse move to turn it off. And the code, like I say, is very simple. So if I'm using the command button mouse move, then I'm putting the hourglass to true. And for the detail section mouse move, I set it back to false. How would you typically use this just as an example? Well, you'd have some process, you know, import data, let's say. Well, you'd start off by doing this, right? Then you'd have whatever code you have for your import process. And then you'd finish off by doing a false to turn it back off. Or you could, you know, have something like uh, update records data and be the same thing. Um, I also use this quite often with mail merge processes. So I do that quite often with mail merges. So there's a whole slew of different reasons to use it, but it's always the same setup. You start off by setting it off, changing your cursor before you do your process. And then I set the hourglass false and in reality in reality just to be completely explicit and 
normally this guy you want to have in your exit because if ever there's an error thrown right uh, you don't want the user exiting like here and the cursor remains locked as an hourglass this approach if there's an error that occurs it's still going to turn it off so that's uh, one worth noting um, you should have it in your error handler or in your uh, your exit process but that will do it guys for controlling uh, mouse cursors via VBA or as you also saw even as easy as using macros I hope this is informative and helps a few of you out there um, wishing you all a great day if you don't mind like subscribe share leave me some, com some comments below have you used any of these which ones do you prefer and have any of you used the actual API um, any comments there warnings um, do you find it preferable to use the API you don't mind having to do different businesses compiling it separately etc 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 so have a great day guys we'll see you in the next video